Turns out Dalton Reisner will sign with the Vikings after all of this for 2024. So what does that mean for Blake Brandle? Welcome to the Lockdown Vikings podcast. You are Locked On Vikings, your daily Minnesota Vikings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to the Locked On Vikings podcast, where we're always trying to learn something new. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you so much to those of you who come listen to this show every single day. My hashtag every day is I appreciate you all so very much. Today's episode of Locked On Vikings is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty bucks off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Of course, you can find the show anywhere you find your favorite podcasts, whether it is an audio listening place like Sirius XM or anywhere else you listen to podcasts. Just search out Locked On Vikings. You can find it on YouTube or even Amazon Fire and Roku if you download the Locked On Minnesota Sports app. Today on the show, of course, we got to talk about Dalton Reisner. There's not too much to say because we don't have the contract details yet, but we can at least kind of uh, hash out exactly the dynamic now at left guard. Plus, we can do his entry in the Everyman series, which I'm actually pretty excited for. So I'm going to try to get through everything else so that I have enough time to give that story a little bit of credit because getting to know Reisner in a more you know, true way, right? He joined week two last year. He didn't get an entry in the Everyman series. Um, it's so easy to root for this guy. <laughs> it's so easy to root for this guy. But here's where we're at with Reisner. So he signs a one-year deal. Uh, the way that Ian Rappaport reported about it was that it would have incentives for starting a certain amount of games uh, or for making the 53-man roster. There's a lot of provisions in this thing, it seems like, which usually the case is that that's not going to be a huge amount of money unless he does you know, make the team and start all year, and then it's going to be amount of, an amount of money that reflects that. But usually, like cap wise, it's going to be not that much money. And my guess is that the starting incentive is more about the fact that he only started, what, eight games last year? So he'll have however much money that is tied, tied up in what would be a not likely to be earned incentive by the, the, the rules of the cap. It will see that as if it didn't happen, happen last year, it's not likely to happen this year. And that means it won't count against this year's cap, it'll count against next year's cap. And only if it happens, which is a really nice way to kind of lower costs and, and keep things manageable, kind of have a little bit more control over your money. They love to do that. So I, I could see that kind of thing happening. But what it also tells you is that they aren't guaranteeing anything here. He might not win the job. He might not win a roster spot. Uh, this is, I mean, I, I it seems like a true blue competition between him, between Reisner and Blake Brandle. And I'm curious to see how that goes. When I looked at the two of them, you can listen to my episode about Brandle. I think I just did it like last week. I kind of thought, I was like, uh, you could argue, right? That that Brandle is a, is better than Reisner. Um, I don't know if I quite go there. I, I, I don't think I have to come up with an answer for how I feel about that yet. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, and, and we'll let Camp kind of do the talking there. Maybe they'll rotate snap counts maybe Reisner will just get it on the basis of like having the job last year and now it'll be up to Brandel to, to make it to take it back or maybe the other way around because Brandel was kind of anointed earlier in the offseason maybe Reisner's gonna gotta be the guy that comes in the building and takes it back you know middle of OTAs he's already missed a couple but either way Reisner in the building um in terms of why it took so long my guess is that he was just asking for too much money until he wasn't his, his demands, his agent's demand. I mean, he fired his agent, so maybe his agent was demanding, too, you know, being too firm and demanding too much, not doing a good enough job of getting his name out there. He fires that guy, and what do you know? Two months later, he's he's taken a deal, whatever that deal is. And maybe with some serious earning potential, if he does what I'm sure he's assuming he'll do, and, you know, go beat the job, beat the guy that was your backup last year, and, and, and go take what's yours. We'll see how it goes. Um but I want to pivot now to his entry in the Everyman series. The Everyman series is a summer tradition here on the Locked On Vikings podcast, where we go over the backstories, the journeys to the NFL, try to get a sense for who all of these players are. And for Reisner, there is, I think, a way to really get a sense for who he is, and very little of it occurs on the field. Um, you'll, you'll get what I mean. But we'll go back all the way to the beginning he grew up in Wiggins, Colorado, which as of a write-up that uh, was about him coming out of the draft, coming out for the draft. So 2019, as of 2019, it was an 877-person town. 
Uh, total farm town in Colorado. Total, like, you, you could not get a more stereotypical, like, farm boy, corn-fed American heartland O-lineman. Like, the only thing that could make him more typical was if this was in, like, Nebraska instead of Colorado. But grew up, you know, middle child of five boys, so there was plenty of roughhousing and things got broken. And, it, you know, that as you would expect with a five-boy household in a tiny little town where there's nothing else to do but wrestle with each other. Uh, and Dalton's father, Mitch Reisner, was his youth football coach. And kind of noticed, like, as he was growing, he was growing a lot. He was a big dude. And we got to get this kid in football. So he was the coach and then also tried to balance being the dad. There's this great piece. There, there's a bunch of great pieces. I'm going to link one uh, from the Denver Post that's like this awesome profile on Reisner that goes over like the meaning of all of his tattoos on his arm and like it kind of uses it as a framing device. I really enjoyed reading it. Uh, I'll, I'll link that in the show notes. Um, there's another one that is, you know, talks about his dad and the sort of tug of war between trying to be a coach, a football coach, being hard on, you know, your, your football kids and then having to be like a dad on the drive home, right? You had, like he was like, yeah, I like yelled at him. And then in the car ride home, I was like, oh, it's okay if the coach yells at you. <laughs> like it's a very weird balancing act. And he has like his dad talks about like, man, I, I like definitely wish I had like handled different situations differently. And Dalton couldn't disagree more. He was like, yeah, it was great. I love the tough love. It really helped make me who I am today. And I'm very grateful to all of that. And I thought he did a great job straddling that line. I think that's cute. But anyways, as it became clear how big and strong Reisner was getting, uh, the, the mission became less about just getting this big, large, energetic child into a sport to burn off some energy, and more about like, wait, th this could actually turn into a scholarship or something. Let's, let's get him in front of colleges. And Mitch Reisner, and, and to, to some extent his mother as well, but, but his dad did a lot of the like literal legwork, and they did a ton of legwork. Because the brutal reality is, is no matter how good you claim to be at college or at, at, at football, nobody's coming to Wiggins, Colorado. You got to go to them. So he's signing up for every college camp, every recruiting event, every little meet and greet that he can get to. And they're driving all over the country. Eighth, ninth, tenth grade, like the summers are just filled with these road trips. And it turns into this like father son, like bonding thing, right? Um, again, I, I always am, am going to this place of like, what would the movie be? The movie would be here. The movie would be father son road trip. It'd be, you know, kind of like a, like a, a father son bonding coming of age slash coming of age story. Like what if a goofy movie was to a football camp and there's this lovely anecdote where they, they rent a car for this cause they're putting thousands of miles on it. So they rent a car for this, this little electric, uh, a Toyota Yaris which is an electric car, this tiny little thing. Reisner literally doesn't fit in it. He's like cramped and they're pulling like all nighter drives to try to get out to, to different colleges all over the country. They, they are not just going local. He does end up getting a lot of local offers. He could go to Colorado or Colorado State, but those are two like big city slicker for the farm boy. So he decides, when he, when he decides he's going to go to Kansas State, he likes the small town vibe. He likes that it kind of feels a little more intimate and warm and, you know, Heartland America. Right. Like, I mean, just like how perfectly Heartland America is this guy. And up to this point, his childhood is very defined by football. Not only football, right? he's still on the farm. He grows up next to like literal like cattle. So, you know, you're helping out with um, whatever needs to be done around the house and all that. And you're playing, you know, you're a small town kid, but like football has such a such a stranglehold. And at that young age, it's that kind of thing that will be so formative to you. We talked about the same dynamic when we did the Everyman series for J.J. McCarthy and, and how it will kind of warp your brain into like, your, you know, football, football, like that SpongeBob episode where it's like football and breathing and that's it. And when Reisner gets to college at Kansas State, there is this sort of awakening that there is so much more to life than that. And through that, he grows into so much more than a football player. That's going to be coming up next. Today's episode of Locked On Vikings is brought to you by Game Time. It's the best place to find last minute tickets. Hey, look, if you are listening to this and you still have a shot to get to Game 5 of the Western Conference Finals and you want to go get it, check out Game Time. Check out Game Time like up to an hour into the event if that works with your plans. You can show up and, and maybe get 
tickets like way cheaper than their like listed sticker price just by virtue of of timing game time can help you get to 60 percent off doing that and it doesn't have to be the western conference finals it can be any sporting event you can get uh nfl you can get like the vikings home, op- home opener any nfl game you, you you want if you're planning a trip to london if you're looking to maybe get the uh the kirk cousins homecoming game or the the annual uh nightly packers game you can find all that as well as concerts, theater, whatever, all at Game Time. And your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown NFL for twenty bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N N F L for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thanks so much for hanging out and listening to the Locked On Vikings podcast. When you're done here, make sure you go to the Locked On Minnesota Sports YouTube page, click on the live tab, and check out their 24-7 All Things Minnesota Sports streaming channel. I'm sure they'll have a lot to say about the uh, Twins and whatever's going on with that sausage and uh, the Wolves and and whatever's left of the wild, professional women's hockey. Maybe you'll hear some, some about that. The Minnesota PWHL team won the championship. Congrats to them. Anyways, moving on with Dalton Reisner. When you go away from your family for the first time, the, that's going to be, you know, coming of age, whether you're ready to or not, right? You, you will be now faced with the independence and the challenges of independence that you just never really had to deal with as a teenager. Probably, of course, everybody's situation is different. But for Reisner, this is this is the kind of jarring change. And there's a lot of different paths that you can take. You really find out what's important to you, what you value when you have the freedom to value whatever you want, right? Um, something Kansas State does is they take an older player and they'll have them room in the freshman dorms with all the other freshman players is like kind of a mentorship thing. And this is where we have to meet Morgan Burns, who is a fifth year senior cornerback who, uh, after this, he'll go try out for the NFL. This is in 2015. This is, is, uh, Reisner's freshman year, 2016. He'll go get some, a, a cup of coffee with the Tennessee Titans, but basically won't make the team. And that'll kind of be that for his NFL career. And, uh, he will join ministry, incredibly pious guy, like very, very strong and devout in his faith. And I probably have to talk about Reisner's faith before I get really any deeper into this. And the, the thing that he really latched onto in the, sort of doctrines of classic American Americana Christianity is the the do unto others part the you know kind of serving your neighbor and serving your community and finding ways to to lift up those that that need it he's really inspired by this and it's it's through his faith but I think it's through a sense of like deep personal principle too and and I I think if you asked him he would kind of say yeah, no it's just it's what I want to do it's what he wants to be service really calls to him at Kansas State. And part of that is Morgan Burns kind of taking him under his wing and showing him through faith and kind of they they strengthen each other in their faith. And that becomes the thing that he devotes all of his time to in college outside of, of course, the time that football takes. He goes to Camp Hope, which is a nonprofit aimed at mentorship and guidance for, for kids that have experienced trauma, mostly family violence, and he he still works with Camp Hope. Camp Hope is this incredibly inspirational experience for him. He just wants to help more. He he feels this sense of of like satisfaction deep in his soul, and he wants to do more. And so he goes through their pro. They have like a Big Brother kind of program for um, kids with cancer, and he starts. The Reisner Up Foundation as well, uh, along the same lines that help like, you know, very ill children with like mentorship and and his the, the mission, it says, is like spreading love and kindness through faith. And but it's that's a, it's not quite that nebulous. Like they will do a lot of like it's 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 a bit of a mentorship, a bit of a like, you know, bringing positivity into the lives of people whose lives need positivity, that kind of thing, as well as, you know, financial help and all that for um, medical bills and stuff, which is is what he does. So. Um, he, they also do work with the special Olympics that he'll, he's, he's very, um, a forward facing name associated with, with the special Olympics and has done a lot of cool stuff there. This is all, um, built over time and into his professional career and stuff, but there's, um, one 
anecdote that I guess is worth telling here. And again, none of this is on the field. This is all off field stuff on the field. It's an up and down time for Kansas State. He he starts like 50 of 51 games at Kansas State. He becomes a stalwart offensive lineman that that most nobody has a stat for offensive linemen. So they just say he started a lot of games and he was there and he was solid and he was a rock and all that. And it's just it's it's just not that it's a boring story. Right. The real, I think, crux of who Reisner is occurs in anecdotes like this one. So via Camp Hope and their like kind of big brothery program, he gets hooked up with the Hampton family. The Hampton families were very much a making well, we're making ends meet kind of family. Uh, financial problems up and down, and their kid has leukemia at the diagnosed at the age of three. So they've got a little kid with leukemia. And all these medical bills are piling up, and they've got all these problems, and this is kind of what the, the, the kind of situation that Camp Hope likes to help out with. And Reisner wants to get involved, and he wants to help. Now, the, the Hamptons are understandably a little bit wary of who gets to kind of, you know, suddenly be this, like, intimately involved with our situation and our stuff. So to set this up and help break the ice, they all go to Golden Corral. You got to remember, this is, this is freshman year Dalton Reisner. This is an 18-year-old kid. With, as he tells it, $183 in his bank account. And they go have this dinner together and they have a nice time and, and he picks up the bill. Because the family's got plenty of financial problems too. He says, I'll pick up the bill. $100 bill out of his 183 that he has to his name. This is the kind of guy that he is. To this day, they all still remain friends. Um, they still have a great relationship. You will be very glad to learn that little uh, Caden, I think his name is, is in remission went to remission at age six and as of 2021 which was when the article that i read about this was written um he was still in remission and had been for three years and later when reisner does get drafted and he gets a little bit of nfl money and he has some money to throw around uh the hamptons the mr and mrs hampton the the mom and dad had never been married because they couldn't afford a wedding so he says, all right, let me help you fix that. And he not only helps them furnish with like an engagement ring, but he helps them a lot with the wedding. And they actually manage to, you know, have the, the like a, a, a real true wedding much beyond the scope of what they could afford otherwise. And there are so many little anecdotes like this with Reisner about him just sort of passing through someone's life and having this like crazy positive impact and like that's just kind of what dalton does like it's very weirdly nonchalant in the way that i read about these things except when you talk to the people that he did it for that are like oh my god like things would have never been the same if he didn't come along if you prefer this is the way that a lot of people at least in in my life that are are more religious than i am would say like this is this is god working through a man um, and, and I've heard that said about similar people in my life. That's like the way that people have described that to me. And through that, it helps him sort of bust out of that, like almost that trance, that hypnosis that football can cast on a kid's brain when it's the thing that got you to college and you're trying to go pro and it's your dream and it's everything and football is everything. Live, eat, breathe, nothing but football. He, he kind of... It helps him get outside his own body a little bit and, and get that sense of perspective where it's like, look, football has ups and downs. And he'll have his ups and downs. There's this moment where they're like two and four and they're struggling and there's a players only meeting and there's this whole thing at Kansas State. And he is able to kind of remove himself from that and say, look, football will be up. Football will be down. But if I choose to, faith never goes down. Right? Like I can always have as much faith as I want. Nobody can stop me. And there's this comfort in that. And this sense of perspective in that, and and I, I think a, a stronger sense of identity that isn't tied to the ups and downs in football, and it helps him withstand the ups and downs of football. That leads him to the pros and the draft and all that, and his time in Denver, which ups and downs, we can call it that. That'll be next. I don't know how much you all remember about the 2019 draft. You can hear me talking about Dalton Reisner on Locked on Vikings if you want to go back to a really old uh, episode that I recorded on a snowball that I was holding with like a jiggly cord that would like <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> That's how this thing started out. Uh, but 
and I remember I was like on my on my laptop on my bed. <laughs> like I didn't even have a desk at the time. Uh, but during that time, he was very much like a likely but not guaranteed first rounder. That was what it was kind of going in. And we talked about Reisner versus I think Connor McDermott came out that year and like Elton Jenkins and Eric McCoy and Bradbury was in that. Um, and he ends up falling, I think to like the bottom of that whole pile outside of, I think Elton or no, Eric McCoy was, I think like the last guy, there were like nine of them and he was like eighth or ninth to go. He goes 41st falls further than he wishes, but he gets to, play for denver hometown colorado right he, he they had never go, he had never like gone to broncos games or anything like that but they rooted for the broncos like they were you know they were from colorado and they rooted for the hometown team so this is really really cool and he gets to go work with chris cooper who's now here and they're they've reunited here but he's the offensive line coach over there and look from 2019 onward the broncos had some weird times his second year is the COVID year and, of course, all the challenges and weird stuff that goes with that. The Broncos themselves don't have that much success in the, the era. You know, he's, his first three years are the three Vic Fangio years in Denver. He gets fired at the end of 2021. And then in um, 2022, it's the Nathaniel Hackett catastrophe extravaganza. And Dalton Reisner doesn't resign after that with with the you know the new Sean Payton regime but there there is a, one little anecdote Reisner is a very hard on your sleeve kind of guy there is i guess a radical honesty to him that i think a lot of people really appreciate it, at Kansas State his teammates really appreciated him his coaches really appreciated him for that you know he was the one that organized the players only meeting we got to get our, our our crap together in um you know at, at Kansas State and it's that same attitude that that I think endears him to the Broncos. I, it had to and have endeared him to the Broncos. Is that the NFL Combine? He's just kind of milling around on the field, I guess, like in between, between drills or something like that. And he sees John Elway, and he sprints a full forty yards over to John Elway, and he says, "Hi, I'm Dalton. I'm going to work really hard for you." <laughs> You should draft me. Like it just like goes and pitches his case because John Elway is just like there and he like sees him, and it, that feels like the kind of brazen but admirable attitude that you only get with like a small town farm boy that doesn't really know anything other than being able to just walk up to someone and talk to him. Um, you know, you you grow up in a in a in a big city, you're not gonna act that way. It's just it's, it's culturally, it's just different. That's kind of what makes America beautiful, in my opinion. Um, but it's that country boy. You know, y what you see is what you get. It is always face value. Maybe the word I'm looking for is sincerity. There is a radical and unflinching sincerity, un uninterrupted sincerity to Dalton Reisner. You might remember um, some talk about locker room issues or whatever with Reisner, and that probably stems from an altercation on the sideline in the 2022 season. This is a cut. This is the Nathaniel Hackett catastrophe year, and you might remember the last game before Hackett got fired was 51 to 14, drubbing at SoFi Stadium at the hands of the Rams absolutely cooked at the hands of the Rams. And I don't think the Rams made the playoffs in 2022. So it like wasn't even an elite team. They were just getting killed by someone. It was McVay, but like still, uh, I, I think they had like a backup quarterback in by then or something like that. Cause I think they got, everybody got hurt really bad that year, uh, for the Rams. Yeah, no, that was the year the Rams were like really bad. And they like gave the lions like a top something like a top 10 pick. Uh, anyways, Really bad. So very, very tense on the sideline. This is when this thing with with Brett Rapine happened. You maybe you maybe heard of this. This might be the one thing you knew about Dalton Reisner before uh, the you know connection with with Chris Cooper. He's a free agent. Maybe we'll we'll take him in and he joined the Vikings before that. So the way that that went down is um, Russell Wilson gets sacked by the fearsome Aaron Aaron Donald led and a bunch of guys Rams defense. I don't remember who got the sack. And Reisner doesn't help him up, which is kind of a faux pas. You're supposed you're the line. You're supposed to help the quarterback up. And 
Brett Rapine takes the backup quarterback, takes a ton of offense to this and goes up to Dalton Reisner and is like, dude, what the hell? You know, take pick your quarterback up. And there's a little shove and Reisner or no Reisner response to this, you know, tempers explode here. Reisner shoves him. Rapine shoves him back a little bit. Guys separate him. It goes turbo viral. I mean, this thing goes like triple platinum and everybody's asking him about it and talking about it. It's like the thing, right? It, it becomes this symbol for the dysfunction that has taken over the Denver Broncos in the Nathaniel Hackett disaster year. And Hackett's fired after this game. And, and so it's just kind of the players left to pick up the pieces. And he'll say, look, at 45 seconds after that happened, we made up, we hugged, we're really good friends, it's fine. It's what he said on the podium, just take it take it for what it's worth. But I, I don't find that to be particularly far-fetched at all, that you know if there is an altercation on the sideline because you're getting beat by, you're getting, I mean, a team's hanging 50 on you and you're getting crushed, everyone's going to be pretty on edge. And maybe you get a little pushy and a little shovey, and then you go, ah, we shouldn't have done that. Sorry about that. And that, and that really is the end of, the, of, of it for the two of you. But the media is going to take it and make a big thing out of it forever and ever and ever. And then when you're a free agent the next year, they're going to say you're a locker room head case and nobody likes you. Maybe there's more to that than I know. Uh, I don't really care, to be honest with you, because I think that who Reisner is is so proven by this point, and he's he's walked so much of the walk that I don't really care that he lost his cool for half a second when he was getting beat by 40 in December of a dead year of the worst year of football he's ever played. Don't really care. I get it. But that brings him to the offseason and this new challenge of free agency, which has been pretty taxing on Dalton Reisner. Of course, he, you know, he doesn't sign anywhere till week two. He doesn't sign anywhere. Shows up to Minnesota. They, he, he shows enough, you know, and Chris Cooper knows him, right? So they trade Cleveland at the deadline and now he's starting and he's there. And then it's the same thing. He doesn't sign until May 29th. And having to sit there and like wait that out. Again, I, I, I don't know if that same patience exists, if not for that rooted and grounded sense of identity that you get from faith and from service and from all of the things that he truly finds himself caring about that allow him to approach football with a much more level head. Like, look, hey, as he's in like the 2022 Broncos, that would get to all of us. Uh, but... <laughs> Other than that, everybody does seem to have really loved playing with this guy. And the Vikings seem to love playing with, like the Vikings players seem to love playing with this guy. He was, you know, a great like energetic in injection into the locker room, especially after the, the Bucks loss kind of hurt him. And then I think it was after, they were 0-2, right? Because they had lost to the, the Eagles. So there's this like, you know, new influx of positive energy with him and Cam Akers, these two guys on like fresh starts. And that's kind of the, the, the foot he got off on with the Vikings seemed to be the right one. And so here we are. Now he's the guy. He's got a one-year deal. He could go any... I mean, this is such a crossroads for, for Dalton Reisner. This is where his career could either hit a renaissance, right? He could win the job, have a good year, earn a, a multi-year contract. Or he could get beat out by Blake Brando, get cut, and now he's a journeyman, and, and now he's, you know, looking at the twilight years of his career. Like, all of those things could happen, and the next couple months are huge for this guy. I look forward to seeing how it plays out, uh, but I don't think he has any, either way. I don't think he has anything to hang his hat about. Uh, tomorrow, I think we'll do a little bit of OTA talk because I know you're all craving. I know you're just dying of, of, of OTA thirst. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Continue with the Everman series. I will see you all for that. And as always, skull. <laughs>